when you create any Spring project with Spring Initializer, you can't even pick but are defaultly given Spring Boot Starter Test Dependency. Spring Boot Starter Test Dependency includes host of library Spring Team Deems are required and recommended so we can test our projects. We'll have a look at four included libraries, JUnit5, Hamcrest, Mokito and AssertJ and explore their role in Spring testing ecosystem. We'll start with JUnit5, which is the core testing framework. Unlike previous versions of JUnit, JUnit5 is composed of several different modules from three different sub-projects. JUnit Platform, JUnit Jupyter and JUnit Vintage. Reasons for splitting up the platform or separation of concerns. JUnit Platform serves as foundation for launching testing frameworks on JVM. JUnit Platform is a middleman between build tools like Gradle and Maven, IDEs like IntelliJ Eclipse and Visual Studio Code and other testing frameworks and provides facilities for test discovery and execution. It defines Test Engine API for developing a testing framework that runs on the platform. JUnit Vintage provides a test engine for running JUnit 3 and JUnit 4 tests, which are previous versions of the framework, and JUnit Jupyter provides test engine for running JUpyter based tests, which are JUnit 5 tests. Other testing frameworks like Cucumber and Spock also have implementations of test engine API and can use JUnit platform for discovering and executing their tests. Let's look at a sample project to better understand JUnit platform test engine API. In the project we have JUnit Jupyter tests, Spock framework tests written in Groovy language and Cucumber framework behavior driven feature tests. If we have a look at test engine interface, we'll see that it has methods for discovering and executing tests. And if we have a look at the implementation in our project, we'll see that Vintage test engine exists for running JUnit 3 and JUnit 4 tests, but also test engines for Cucumber and Spock are implemented, as well as JUnit Jupyter test engine, which runs JUnit 5 tests. This is the way all these frameworks hook into JUnit platform and tests gets executed by running test command in the build tool. JUnit Jupyter module, name inspired by fifth planet from the sun, Jupyter, is a combination of programming model, which are facilities for defining tests, assertions and assumptions, and extension model, which is a way for third-party providers to hook up in testing lifecycle, something Spring uses extensively. Let's see example of creating JUnit Jupyter test. We need to create a class under source test subdirectory. We'll call it first test. And in there we'll need to create a method that will annotate with add test annotation. Method doesn't have to be public, but it can't be private. JUnit team recommends that we omit the public modifier unless we have a specific reason not to. We'll create a variable, call it sum, and it will be 1 plus 1, and then we can use assertions from JUnit API to assert expected value. First we'll create a failing test, so we'll assert that the sum should be 1, and we'll run the test just to make sure everything is correct, and then we'll make the test pass. And we can statically import assertions so the test reads more clearly. JUnit Jupyter omitted popular assert that assertion from JUnit 4 version, and while JUnit Jupyter assertions facility is sufficient for many testing scenarios, there are times where more power and additional functionality is desired or required. In such cases, JUnit team recommends third-party libraries such as Hamcrest and AssertJ, which are also included in Spring Boot Starter test dependency. In case you were wondering, the strange name Hamcrest is just an anagram for matchers. Let's go through examples to see how assertions utilities compare between these libraries. Let's first look at the equality assertions. Notice that JUnit places expected value on the first position of the parameter list, which for me is the reverse way to think about assertions. Hamcrest and AssertJ libraries agree. And usage with them is that assert that something I'm testing, the actual value is equal to something that I'm expecting, and not the other way around, like in JUnit 5 case. 
Main difference between Hamcrest and SRJ is in nesting function calls of Hamcrest versus chaining functions with DOT in SRJ. I find that IDEs can help more with chaining functions instead of nesting function calls. Let's go to more examples. Here we see example of null assertions. JUnit5 is the most concise, assert null for the value, Hamcrest assert that actual value is null value, and assert j assert that actual and then function call is null. Similar for not null. For true and false logical conditions, again JUnit5 is the most concise. Hamcrest assert that logical condition is true, assert j assert that logical condition function call is true. For the false it's very similar. For object references we have assert same assertion. In the case of Hamcrest it's assert that actual same instance as expected and assert j has assert that actual is same as as expected. For not same it's just the not negation. For double comparisons between a certain delta, we have in a case of JUnit5 just a normal assert equals. In a case of Hancrest, assert that actual double clo is close to expected double and delta as a parameter of the function. And assert J has assert that actual double is close to expected double within a delta. For array comparisons, we have in JUnit5 assert array equals. For Hamcrest, we have asserted that actual is expected array. Hamcrest is operator is smart enough to compare array values, not array references, which is what we usually want. And assert J has asserted that actual is equal to expected array. Empty collections assertions in a case of JUnit5 is just normal assert equals, in a case of Hamcrest, empty function, and in a case of assert J is empty function call. When we want to assert on non-empty collections, we have in JUnit5 just normal assert equals, and in case of Hamcrest, an assert J has size functions. When we need to make multiple assertions on the same object, we'd want to use group assertions instead of multiple single ones. JUnit5 has assert all function when we can line up other primary basic assertions like assert equals and assert true. Hamcrest has all of functions where we can line up other measures, and assert j shines in this example. We just chain assertion functions together. If we need to make assertions that some code raises an exception, we could use assert throws with exception type, followed by lambda that throws an exception. Assert j has complicated assert that exception of type is thrown by, but assert j shines in the next example where we need to make assertions based on the exception with got. In the assert j case, we use assert that thrown by, give it a lambda that can throw an exception and then chain assertion operators. In the JUnit5 case, we need to catch a variable and then make assertions in a new line. With Hamcrest and assert j, you can also write your own custom matches to make the testing code tailor made to your domain. Here we have a test where we'd like to assert that square root of minus 1 is not a number. Another number does not exist in a list of Hamcrest matches. For that reason, we defined our own custom matcher is not a number that extends abstract class from Hamcrest, type safe matcher and operates on the double. We need to overwrite matches safely method and provide custom error in a case of assertion failure. It's custom to provide static factory method that we can statically import in our tests and make it more readable. Let's look at the example of custom matches in a search J. Here we have a student object and we make multiple assertions that student is registered and that it has an email. We'd like to replace these multiple assertions with one assertion that, for example, student is valid. And here is our is valid student assertion. We implemented custom assert j matcher, which extends abstract assert, student assert and student. And is valid student is a method that checks all the conditions that we need to satisfy for our assertions to pass. And the rest is boilerplate code needed for custom matcher to be implemented in a search J library. This would conclude our overview of the programming model of JUnit Jupyter and extensions operators in Hamcrest and a search J libraries. We saw that Hamcrest and a search J have a rich vocabulary of assertions and are extensible 
and in the end what you choose is a matter of preference and you can combine them as well. Let's discuss how JUnit platform integrates with build tools. Gradle provides native support for executing tests on JUnit platform, provided that within test task declaration in build Gradle, use JUnit platform is specified, which it is by default in Spring projects. Maven provides native support for executing JUnit platform tests with the use of plugins, Maven Surefire and Maven Failsafe plugin. Surefire plugin belongs to a set of Maven core plugins and runs unit tests of the application. Surefire plugin binds with the Maven test phase and in case of test failures the build fails and no further phases execute during the build process. If you look at our project we'll see that Surefire plugin is included in the plugin section of the Maven build tool. Surefire test goal is run during the Maven test phase and in fact if project is already validated and compiled the output of Surefire test goal should be identical to output of Maven test phase. Maven failsafe plugin must be installed into the project and is designed to run integration tests within a project. If any tests fail during integration test phase, the plugin does not fail the build immediately, but allows Maven to execute post-integration test phase, where we could still perform any cleanup and environment teardown we might have needed for integration tests. JUnit Jupyter at tests and assertions we were looking at before were part of their programming model, but part of the subproject is also the extension model. Extension model provides API for extending tests at various points in the test execution lifecycle. The purpose is to create your own cross-cutting concern and write callbacks, parameter resolvers, etc. Extension model provides before all callback, before each callback and before test execution callbacks and their after counterparts. Before all runs before all tests in the class and before each and before test execution before each test. Before test execution callback purpose is to provide additional behavior to test immediately before test is executed but after any user defined setup methods in before each. If we have a look at base Spring Boot test annotation, we'll see that it uses the extension model and implements the callback methods via Spring extension class. Spring slice testing annotations like WebMBC test also use Spring extension class and the extension model is used by other testing libraries like test containers for example. Spring at its core is dependency injection framework and when we use constructor injection with Lombok and not field injection with AutoWired, this leads itself to being able to easily replace dependencies of classes during tests. Add AutoWired annotation is okay to use in tests where there will be no other parts of the application that will need to replace class dependencies. Dependency replacement topic ties into another core testing library included in Spring Boot Starter Test, Mokito. The main reason to use Mokito is to stop method calls and verify interactions between objects. Let's look at contrived example of a service that has repository for its dependency to understand the purpose of Mokito. Our service can return empty optional in case repository throws an exception or optional of correct value. If we want to unit test our service, we don't want to use real repository implementation. That might cause us to spin real database. Instead, we want to use replacement we can control and just verify our service is behaving as expected in our two use cases. This is where Mokito helps us, as it can mock our repository. Let's see a couple of ways we can use Mokito. We can mock the student repository by using Mokito mock method and then we can inject the mock repository into our student service. Then in our test, we can instruct Mokito by using the when method to anytime our student repository finds student by ID with any parameter is called, it should throw a legal argument exception. We then call our service find by ID method and assert that it should return an empty optional in a case when our repository throws an exception. We can also use Mokito's verify method that we verify that student repository find student by ID method was indeed called. Alternative way of creating mocks instead of using Mokito mock method and injecting our mock into our service is by using extend with Mokito extension class, then annotating the class we want to mock with at mock 
and annotating a class we need to inject our mocks with add inject mocks. This will effectively accomplish the same thing as the example above. Let's look at how we can test our other branch. We'll extract Mokito, then when student repository find student by ID with value 22 is called, then it should return student Bob. Then we'll call our service under test with find by ID with a value of 22 and assert it has to have a value of Bob, the value that our repository returned. In our verify phase, we use another feature of Mokito and that is to capture the argument with which our mocked class was called. And then we can assert that our student repository find student by ID was indeed called with value 22. Let's continue on with our example and look at student controller class which uses our student service. If student was found, it should return it with HTTP status OK. Otherwise, it should return 404, not found status. We also want to use mocks for test in this example to mock our student service, but where in previous examples we were dealing with unit tests, in control tests we'll need to use add webmbc slice annotation and start our Spring application context. To satisfy our Spring dependencies, it's not enough to just mock our student service. We also need to place its instance in Spring application context, and for that we use add mock bean annotation. Having done that, we can mock our student service similarly as we did our student repository in a previous test. We can instruct Mokito then when our student service find by ID method is called with any integer, we should return a student Bob. And then when we perform our get request on our controller with student 5, we should get a status of OK. And we can also verify that our student service was called with ID 5. Another branch we might test is to perform a GET request when student is not found. And we don't have to say anything to Mokito because it returns optional empty by default. So in that case we should get a 404 client error. This concludes our look at four base testing libraries included in Spring projects by default. Not only does Spring Boot include these libraries, but Spring for each of its sub-projects provides additional testing capabilities. We saw one of them with add web MVC test annotation. Spring Framework in general embraces testing and in future we'll explore more testing methods and libraries.